this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Describe the journal entry for recording a note receivable and the effect on the accounting equation. So a note receivable, we might first approach this type of essay question, this type of discussion question by first noting what a note receivable is. We could do that by comparing it to an accounts receivable. So it is still a receivable, it's going to be an asset. It could be a current asset or a long-term asset depending on the time frame of note receivable. We might first think that the difference between a note receivable and an accounts receivable is the fact that one is going to be long-term versus short-term, but that's not necessarily the case. The, the notes receivable we will be using most of the time here are going to be receivable notes that have a uh, time frame of the due date of the note being longer than a typical account receivable but not typically being over a year, which is the determining factor that would typically put the note receivable into a non-current asset category. So first, what's an accounts receivable? That's gonna be the default standard. That's gonna be something that is owed to us due to a prior uh, transaction, typically due to a sale of goods or services. So the journal entry there would be a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to some type of revenue. Uh, would, would be income or revenue or it could be called sales if we sell goods or fees earned if we have a service and then if we sell inventory we may debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory at the same time if it's a perpetual inventory system so that's going to be the the normal accounts receivable we will have now a note receivable we may have the same type of transaction same journal entry replacing accounts receivable with notes receivable in certain circumstances, meaning the journal entry could be a debit rather than to accounts receivable to notes receivable, and then a credit to sales or revenue or income or fees earned, whatever we call the revenue account. And if we sell goods or services, a debit to cost of goods sold and a credit to inventory. Why might we do this for notes receivable? Uh, usually if the dollar amount is larger in nature, if the term of payment is, is longer, longer than a normally accounts receivable is 30 days, so if it's something longer than 30 days, and um, maybe if it's something that we want to charge interest on. These things, of course, are related. If it's a larger dollar amount, we may want to charge interest on it. If it's a larger dollar amount, it may be that it takes longer time period to get paid on it. The terms might be longer for us to be getting payment on. And if the dollar amount is larger and we um, have terms that are longer, we, we probably are going to want to charge interest on it because we are in essence making a loan. And for those three reasons, because of the added complexity of this agreement, we may want more than just um, a receipt or, or more of a, like a verbal agreement uh, that we would have under accounts receivable. We might have want to have written formal documentation, a document basically showing that a promise to pay uh, is given a promise to pay in a formal documentation listing the amount of principal, the interest rate, and the term, the time period of the note receivable that we will have. So that's going to be the normal type of transaction and, and an idea of what the notes receivable is. And also the note receivable might go on the books instead of making a sale and replacing the note receivable or replacing the accounts receivable with a note receivable. We, we might have a circumstance where we basically convert a receivable, an accounts receivable, to a notes receivable. So if, for example, an accounts receivable was not being paid, it went past the terms, the 30-day term period, and we are extending the term, we may then say, okay, we want to make a formal extension, and then we'll give you a longer period of time to pay However, we would like to collect interest on it and have a, a formal written promise of that payment. That could be a circumstance where we would, we would have a, a conversion. And the journal entry would be straightforward. We would debit notes receivable, converting it to the asset, the asset going up for notes receivable, and credit reduce accounts receivable. In other words, we would just take it out of accounts receivable, it being an asset type of account with a credit, and put it into a note receivable, it being an asset type account with a debit. Now, uh, again, it doesn't mean that we're taking it from a current asset to a long-term asset. The effect on the accounting equation would be null in a, because even the effect on the current assets, meaning 
the the asset went up and the asset went down in that case so the account and the assets would remain the same in net no effect on liabilities no effect on the equity when we make a sale it would have the accounting equation would have the same effect as it would if we made a sale and used accounts receivable meaning if we debit accounts receivable and we credit sales then the assets are going up because accounts receivable is going up and the other side of the accounting equation would be equity equity would be going up because um, sales are going up that brings net income up net income brings equity up 